Hi, it's Katrina. From a long-lost kingdom to one of the most haunted places in India, here are 10 ancient archaeological sites that were once the most powerful places in the world. Number 10. Fort of Bahrain Kalat al-Bahrain, or the Bahrain Fort, has been around for an extremely long time. Located on the small island nation of Bahrain, the location of the fort has seen many things and several cultures have used the site over the years. The archaeological site was inhabited from 2300 BC all the way until the 18th century. It was home to Kassites, Greeks, the Portuguese, and Persians at various points throughout history. The city also served as the capital of the Dilmun civilization, which played an important role in the region's history. Dilmun was only mentioned in Sumerian mythology as the bright and pure land where death didn't exist. There was water here and gardens, and the gods tended sacred plants. Sumerian gods were believed to live in Dilmun, but in this case, it looks like it was an actual place. Archaeologists have found evidence that Bahrain was once covered with natural springs and hundreds of thousands of ancient burial mounds. At the fort site, archaeologists unearthed an expansive collection of Dilmun artifacts, providing physical proof of a society that was previously only known as myth. Kalat al-Bahrain consists of a 39-foot-high artificial mound with seven distinct layers representing the different periods of occupation. The site contains various structures, including residential, public, military, and religious buildings. A Portuguese fort sits atop the mound, testifying to Kalat al-Bahrain's significance as a port city. When the Portuguese arrived here, they built the fort on top of the mound, and you can still visit some of the rooms today. Underneath, there are the remains of a lighthouse, which means that this place was probably an extremely important port for thousands of years. Only about a quarter of Kalat al-Bahrain has been excavated, meaning that there may be more fascinating discoveries from powerful civilizations of the past waiting to be found. Number 9. Mapun Gubwe Situated along the modern-day borders of South Africa, Zimbabwe, and Botswana, the ancient city of Mapun Gubwe was the center of what was once the South African subcontinent's largest kingdom. It thrived as a major trading hub during the 13th and 14th centuries and was best known for its gold and ivory. China, Egypt, and India were among its top trading partners. The settlement's ruins were discovered in 1932, but news of the find was kept secret until 1994, presumably for the sake of keeping the site protected from looters and vandals. Mapungubwe left behind no written records, so everything we know about it we have gotten from the remains of its buildings. The architecture and artifacts left behind are helping us to piece together the society's culture, beliefs, and day-to-day -day lives. The ruins represent the first known evidence of a class-based society in southern Africa. There was a powerful ruling class, and then the rest of the population. Based on surviving structures that appear to have been houses or government buildings, experts surmise that life was mostly agriculture-based for the commoners of this tight-knit, family-oriented society. The site's oldest buildings, which date back to the 11th century, suggest that Mapungubwe's residents relocated there from a nearby settlement. There is evidence that Mapungubwe suddenly grew in the year 1045. Everyone was happy until inhabitants abandoned the settlement during the 15th century for reasons that remain a mystery to this day. One prevailing theory holds that climate change caused a drought and made it difficult to raise crops, forcing residents to seek out a more fertile place to live. Number 8. Tessifon Located on the banks of the Tigris River, southeast of modern-day Baghdad, Tessifon is an ancient city that served as the capital of the Parthian and Sasanian empires. Situated along the Silk Road, it was reportedly built during the 2nd century BC as a military camp and became an important trade center, often moving caravans of Chinese goods across the river to the city of Seleucia. Now, it is famous for having the world's largest brick-built arch, left behind by the ancient Persians. It was part of a palace complex and stands at 37 meters tall. There are conflicting stories surrounding Tessiphon's beginnings. The writings of Pliny the Elder claim that Tessiphon was established with the intention to outcompete with nearby Seleucia, which sat across the river. He wrote that the city's founders hoped that Seleucia's residents would be drawn to Tessiphon and relocate there. 
The Romans conquered the city three times during the 2nd century and twice after that, and the city served as a major cultural and economic center under Roman rule. In 637 AD, Muslim Arab invaders looted and took over Ctesiphon, using some of the materials from its structures to build the city of Baghdad. Today, the city stands in ruins. In 2013, the Iranian government made plans to restore it as a tourist attraction. The most famous attraction now is the Great Standing Arch of Tak Kasra, which experts believe was built under the Sasanian king Shapur I during the 3rd century BC, according to his father's vision. Number 7. Mayan Megacity Deep in the Guatemalan jungle in 2018, scientists discovered tens of thousands of Mayan structures, including houses, defense works, pyramids, agricultural fields, and irrigation systems. Factoring in this newfound megacity, experts estimate that up to 10 million people once lived throughout the Maya lowlands, between two and three times as many as they originally thought. The discoveries were made using LIDAR, or Light Detection and Ranging Technology, which detects structures hidden beneath dense foliage. Thanks to this capability, the team didn't have to go trekking through the jungle with machetes. They identified around 60,000 structures spanning an 810 square mile area, including four major ceremonial centers containing pyramids and plazas. Additional evidence shows that the land was heavily cultivated in order to feed the burgeoning Maya population. Maintaining these farmlands required a massive, highly organized workforce. These findings show that the Mayan civilization was far more advanced and powerful than it has long been given credit for. Thanks to technologies like LIDAR, scientists can more efficiently identify long-lost sites, sparing them the time and energy of guessing where they think something might be and cutting through the dense jungle to get there, with no fathomable clue about their chances of finding anything. Number 6. Ancient Capital of Kings Between the 14th and 19th centuries, Inwa, also called Ava, was the imperial capital of the Burmese kingdom. Located in modern-day Myanmar's Mandalay region, it was sacked and rebuilt several times as leadership changed. This was the seat of the mighty Burmese Empire. Inwa was founded on an artificial island in the 1300s and then spread out from there. The ruler of the time ordered canals to be built to connect rivers and swamplands together so he could make an island citadel based on its strategic location. During the Ava period between the 14th and 16th centuries, the city was the capital of Upper Burma. As a major intellectual center, academics and philosophers flocked to the site. In 1511, an exquisite golden palace was built here. But the Ava period was not all smooth sailing. Inwa fell under siege during the Forty Years' War in 1405, and in 1527, the city fell to numerous invaders who would come and take over. It was constantly getting recaptured and rebuilt over the years. During the 16th century, Inwa became the capital of all of Burma and served as the headquarters of the efforts to unify the kingdom. But the city's glory days came to an abrupt halt in 1753, when enemy forces burned it down. Reconstruction began nearly a decade later in 1764, and then once again in 1765, Inwa became the capital. It subsequently served as the capital during the 19th century. In 1839, a series of devastating earthquakes hit the region, leaving Inwa in ruins as tremors continued in the aftermath of the destruction. Buildings were leveled, and people and animals died in mass. This marked the end of the city's existence, and a few years later, the capital was relocated for good. There are a few remaining areas of the once powerful capital, including the city's brick walls and a tower. Unfortunately, what's left of Inwa does little to capture its former magnificence. And now for number 5. But first, want to give a big shout out to Donna Carmen and her grandson. Hi guys! Big thank you to you for watching and supporting Origins Explained. If you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button to join the Origins Explained family. Number 5. Great Zimbabwe Built in the southeastern hills of modern-day Zimbabwe, the enormous walled city of Great Zimbabwe is one of ancient Africa's long-enduring mysteries. Researchers have established that Great Zimbabwe was rich, powerful, and technologically advanced, but the extent of its influence is unknown. People began living in Great Zimbabwe around 1100 AD, and it peaked between 1200 and 1450, during which time it housed as many as 30,000 residents. 
Wealth from distant lands flowed into the city, which was at the heart of an expansive and wealthy trade network that extended as far as China and India. The city was also rich with gold, thanks to its local mines and large cattle herds. Surrounded by walls measuring up to 66 feet high, the medieval city may have served as a royal palace for the Zimbabwean monarch. Even more mysteriously, the city suffered an unexplainable decline and was abandoned during the 15th century. Baffled scholars speculate that political instability, overpopulation, changes in trade routes, the exhaustion of gold mines, and or famines caused by overgrazing may have contributed to Great Zimbabwe's downfall. Today, the UNESCO World Heritage Site is in ruins. Its most fascinating feature is the Great Enclosure. Dating back to the 14th century, the area is surrounded by a circular wall and additional inner walls and it contains a tower. Its use is unknown, but researchers have suggested that it functioned as a royal palace or a grain storage facility. Sadly, only limited excavations have been carried out and the site was significantly damaged during the 20th century by European looters. It's possible or even likely that Great Zimbabwe's secrets are contained within its unexplored ruins. Number 4. Bangar Fort Bangar Fort was built in 1573 AD in what is now Rajasthan, India under the command of local ruler Raja Bhagwant Singh. It was dedicated to his son Madho Singh and was considered an architectural marvel of the time. The city flourished during ancient times, peaking at around 10,000 residents. It boasted a royal palace, numerous temples, public chambers, marketplaces, and mansions or havelis. The site is better known today as one of India's most haunted sites. One legend claims that an ascetic cursed the city after the land itself became overshadowed by its structures. According to another story, a black magic practitioner cursed the fort after failing to win over the heart of a local princess. Some newer stories involve fatal accidents taking place at Bangar. Visitors are banned from entering between sunset and sunrise unless they take a guided nighttime tour. This policy has caused many to question what types of supernatural phenomena they may encounter during their visit. Number 3. Lost African Empire Found Archaeologists have recently found the remains of the long-lost African Christian Kingdom of Alwa. Located in modern-day central and southern Sudan, it is the least studied of the three known medieval Nubian kingdoms. Its exact Christian origins are a mystery, but it's believed the people here practice a Christian rite inspired by the Egyptian Coptic Church. Out of dozens of archaeological sites that have been identified, only Awa's capital, Soba, has been thoroughly excavated. Soba occupied a roughly square mile area and was described as a town of extensive dwellings and churches full of gold and gardens. At its height, it may have supported a population of 30,000, according to archaeologists. This wealthy urban center was home to around 25 churches, including one that researchers believe was the last Egyptian-style temple to be built. Evidence suggests that the Alwa kingdom dates back to the 6th century and flourished for nearly 1,000 years. At its peak in 900 AD, it covered some 120,000 square miles, about the size of Italy. However, in 1504, it fell to Islamic forces, and the Christian kingdom was cut off from the European Christian nations. Excavations have revealed an enormous palace and very large churches. Archaeologists have also found extremely delicate pottery that was richly decorated, with all kinds of geometric designs and animals, all kinds of gold, textiles, Chinese porcelain, and tombs made of marble. Alwa was one of the last Christian kingdoms of the Nile Valley and, in a way, the last remnant of the ancient Egyptian civilization itself. As The Independent points out, most of ancient Egypt was taken over by the Romans, but Meroe and other places in Sudan remained, continuing the civilization. Number 2. Vilcabamba Immediately upon his arrival to northern Peru in 1531, Spanish conquistador Francisco Pizarro began claiming territories on behalf of both himself and Spain. Pizarro's 180 men and their horses encroached upon the Inca Empire, which did not back down without a fight. In 1536, the Incas rebelled against the conquistadors and retreated deep into the jungle of the Peruvian Andes. The empire launched attacks against the Spanish from Vilcabamba, its newly established secret rebel base that ultimately served as the civilization's final stronghold. 
Nestled in a remote mountainous region, Vilcabamba served as a capital for several cities that the Inca rebels had established throughout the region. Four different leaders ruled over Vilcabamba until it fell to the conquistadors in 1572, at which point the Incas set fire to the site and abandoned it, rather than let it get into enemy hands. The Spanish captured and executed the ruler, Tupac Amaru I, thereby effectively ending the Inca Empire. Over time, the city was forgotten and nature reclaimed it. For over a century, archaeologists searched tirelessly for Vilcabamba. Following its discovery in the 1980s, architect and explorer Vincent Lee mapped it all out. The foliage was reportedly so thick that a person could hardly distinguish between the buildings. Vilcabamba's ruins consist of a massive hall with 26 doorways, a palace compound, and numerous streets, rooms, temples, and stairways. The site was never looted thanks to its remoteness and inaccessibility, making the ruins extremely valuable for gaining further insight into what went on there. Number 1. Ayutthaya Located north of Bangkok in what is now central Thailand, the ancient Siamese capital of Ayutthaya was once one of the world's richest cities. It was founded in 1531 by King Yu Thong, who sought refuge there from a smallpox outbreak as the second Siamese capital after Sukhothai. This strategically situated metropolis was built on an island that was surrounded by three rivers leading to the sea. Ayutthaya flourished between the 14th and 18th centuries as a global center of diplomacy and commerce. During its heyday, the city contained roads, canals, gilded temples, palaces filled with treasure and an advanced water management system. An estimated 300,000 residents lived there by the year 1600, and experts believe the population may have numbered as many as a million by the 18th century. In 1767, the Burmese army sacked Ayutthaya, causing the kingdom to collapse and its inhabitants to flee. The invaders set fire to the capital, and because many of the city's structures were made from wood, much of its architecture was lost in the blaze. All that's left of Ayutthaya are the 50 or so stone relics and temples that survived the fire. The ruins consist of the city's reliquary towers or praying, as well as large monasteries which stand as the few remaining testaments to the kingdom's former splendor. Although there is relatively little to see today, Ayutthaya is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Thanks for watching! Which place was your favorite? Which place would you visit if you could? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you next time! Bye!